live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The two-point conversion is one of the most exciting plays in all of football. It's an all-or-nothing play. Unlike every other non-kicking related play, there are only two possible outcomes. Either the team finds its way into the end zone and finishes the drive with 8 points, or they don't and only walk away with 6. Two-point conversions can change a game. Get it right, and you can put a game out of reach, cut a deficit and bring a game within striking distance, or can give yourself a more favorable scoreline. Get it wrong, and well, the exact opposite can happen. And in 1995, we had the perfect example of a coach getting it completely wrong. Because in 1995, New York Giants head coach Dan Reeves had what might be the worst game in NFL history from a two-point conversion standpoint. His controversial decisions and his team's poor execution cost his team not one, not two, but three points. And sure enough, the Giants wound up losing the game by two points. It might be the biggest case in league history of an aggressive two-point conversion strategy biting a team in the butt. And this is the story behind the game. Before I talk about the situation at hand and the conversions that took place, we need some context to understand the head coach in question, since his stance on the two-point conversion makes this entire situation even weirder than it already would have been without any context whatsoever. As mentioned earlier, this game took place in 1995, which was the second year that the two-point conversion existed in the National Football League. Here's a very brief history of its implementation to understand the story a little bit better. For the first 74 years of the NFL's existence, there was no two-point conversion. While this existed in the American Football League for all 10 years of its existence, when the merger happened, this rule was dropped. It would have been very interesting to see an AFC-NFC split with a conversion, like we see in baseball with a designated hitter in the American League versus the National League, but I digress. However, in 1994, the landscape of football was changing, and in the eyes of a ton of people, including the competition committee and commissioner Paul Tagliabue, the game was starting to get a bit boring. It was devolving into nothing more than a kicking competition. Kickers were getting better, and in Tagliabue's eyes, the pendulum had swung far too much in favor of the defense, with the average team scoring a relatively low 18.7 points per game in 1993. With that, prior to Super Bowl 28, Tagliabue unveiled some proposals to try and increase the excitement of the game, as well as increase scoring. Some of them, like his proposal to assign different point values to field goals depending on their distance, were stupid and gimmicky and never got finalized. However, one of the proposals that did go through was the implementation of the two-point conversion. It had been the college game since 1958, had been in Canadian football since 1975, had been in just about every competing league, and now it was time for the NFL to bring it in. For the most part, people were incredibly receptive to this rule change. Cowboys head coach Jimmy Johnson was a fan, saying that this was going to add an element of excitement and strategy while calling the extra point boring. Vikings head coach Dennis Green was a fan, saying that it would bring out an aggressive attitude that a lot of coaches had. Giants general manager George Young, while not a fan at first, became a fan in the offseason and was excited by the prospect of the two-point conversion sparking comebacks. And Dolphins head coach Don Shula, while also not a fan at first since he'd been a head coach for more than three decades, was on board after he realized how it would bring excitement to the sport and put an increased emphasis on touchdowns. Everyone seemed to be on board with the plan. That was, everyone except for one person. There was a very vocal critic of this plan, and there was a Grinch that had to ruin the fun. That person? New York Giants head coach Dan Reeves. Much like Yankees fans hate the Red Sox and true New Yorkers hate people who put pineapple on their pizza, Dan Reeves absolutely hated the two-point conversion, and nothing whatsoever was going to change his mind. Reeves had been a head coach in the NFL for over a decade at this point, with 1994 being his second season in New York after 12 seasons in Denver. And Reeves wasn't a bad coach by any means. He made three Super Bowls with the Broncos, and was coming off of a 1993 season where he was named the Coach of the Year after taking the Giants to the postseason immediately following the absolutely disastrous reign of Ray Hanley. But he was opposed to the change, and he did not like the two-point conversion at all. When the proposal got passed to put in the two-point conversion for the 1994 season, Reeves rolled his eyes. He was the most vocal critic against the plan, saying, give me a break. Regarding the reasoning behind the move, which was to increase excitement after a down year offensively, he said, you can take statistics and make them look like anything. I don't think we should be so worried about offense as much as we should be worried about exciting football. Fans want excitement, and I'm not sure that means more scoring. He said that coaches weren't involved in the decision process, even though that was a lie since three coaches were on the competition committee and coaches had a chance to express their thoughts beforehand. And he said that this change swung the rules in favor of the offense too much. Plus, he hated the reasoning behind the conversion that it would spark comebacks, citing Buffalo's famous 35-3 comeback against the Houston Oilers in the 1992 wildcard round. 
which was done without the conversion. And as the season drew closer, he continued to speak out against the two-point conversion. He was not letting this go. He ran it some more, saying that the game was fine the way it was, back when players had to run a mile uphill both ways just to get to practice, and was annoyed that he had to actually devote practice time to a play that might never happen. He said that he was going to need to devote at least an hour a week in practice for two-point conversion plans, and that was a problem devoting that much time to something that might never come up in a game, considering the already limited amount of time you have to plan for a game in the first place. In case you haven't been able to figure it out by now, Reeves hated the two-point conversion with a burning passion, and wanted absolutely nothing to do with the rule change. In 1994, the Giants called the two-point conversion just twice. Both times came in the fourth quarter with the Giants down by five, needing the conversion to make it a three-point game. Reeves was not as sure happy or as aggressive as other coaches. That would all change in 1995, though, in an absolutely bizarre game where Reeves' strategy would come back to cost his team in a big way. November 5, 1995, where the King Dome in Seattle for this interconference matchup between the New York Giants and the Seattle Seahawks. This is an absolutely monumental game for the Giants. For Seattle, their season's pretty much over, as they're two and six through the midway point, three back of a wild card spot. They would need a miracle and then some to make it into the postseason. However, for the Giants, their playoff chances are riding on this game. Following a win against Washington the previous week, they were three and five, two back of a wild card spot. A win here keeps them in the hunt. Heck, the Detroit Lions have the same record after eight games of three and five and made it to the postseason that year. However, a loss all but ends their season. And early on, this game was all Seattle. The Seahawks entered this game with a pretty anemic offense. They had scored just 145 points for one of the worst totals in the league and were held to 14 or less in half of their games at that point. However, you would never know it based off of how they started this game. In the first quarter, the Seahawks scored not one, not two, but three touchdowns. Brian Blades, Seattle's star receiver who had over 1,000 yards the previous year, had only found the end zone twice in the last 12 months before this game. He found it twice in the first quarter, scoring on a 33-yard touchdown to open up the scoring and following that up with a 44-yard touchdown. Tack on a Joey Galloway punt return touchdown for 89 yards, which happened to be the first of Galloway's career, and you have the Seahawks comfortably in front with a 21-3 lead, not even 15 minutes into the game. It was a disastrous start for New York, who absolutely needed to have this game if they were going to have any shot at making it back to the postseason. However, the Giants were still going to put up a fight and claw their way back into it. On the ensuing drive, New York drove down the field, and eventually, Dave Brown hit Herschel Walker on an 8-yard pass in the end zone. Tack on the extra point, and the Giants were now down 21-10. Side note. This play right here was not just the only touchdown that Walker had in 1995, but it would be the last time he ever scored as a member of the Giants, so this play is a small bit of history. And after the Giants' defense forces back-to-back -back punts, the Giants would strike again with less than two minutes to go in the first half, with Dave Brown throwing an absolute dime to Mike Sherrard for a 28-yard score. The Giants were now down 21-16, and what followed the rest of the way, and what you're about to see, is the worst played two-point conversion game in the history of the NFL. Following the Sherrard touchdown, the Giants decided to go for two. Yes, it was the first half, but they wanted to cut it to a three-point game. Seems like an aggressive strategy for Reeves considering what we knew about him, but regardless, the Giants trot out there for the play. Brown gives it up the middle to Ronnie Hampton, and this play comes nowhere close. It makes sense that the Seahawks were all over it. Both of Reeves' two-point conversion attempts in 1994 were runs, so they had a pretty solid idea that the Giants were going to do the same here especially since Rodney Hampton was a big halfback who made the Pro Bowl in two of the last three seasons and consistently crossed the 1,000-yard barrier. The Giants are down by five, with the first two-point conversion failing. Later in the half, New York gets the ball back after an interception, and following yet another dime by Brown to Sherrard, the Giants have the ball at the goal line. Brown gives it to Rodney Hampton, and this time, Hampton punches it in for six, giving the Giants a 22-21 lead and their first lead of the game. Pretty impressive to erase a 21-3 deficit in just one quarter. Side note, the over-under was 37 and a half, and we smashed that mark before halftime. Time to try and make it a three-point game going into the half. Once again, it's time to go for two. This time, they call a passing play, and Brown looks for Arthur Marshall in the end zone. However, he throws it off balance, misses Marshall, and because he underthrew it, even if the ball was caught, it would have been short of the goal line. That's the Dave Brown the Giants fans were accustomed to. New York is now 0 for 2 on the conversion. Fast forward to the fourth quarter with the Giants trailing the Seahawks 27-22, and the Giants are able to reclaim the lead after Ronnie Hampton scores his second rushing touchdown of the day, once again punching it in from a yard out. Now with the Giants leading 28-27, it's time to go for two yet again and make it a three-point game. They turn to Dave Brown, and it's a very similar play to the one they ran to Marshall last time. This time, the Seahawks are all over it, as Marshall never had a chance on this one. Come to think of it, 
This is practically the exact same play, with the same receiver and everything that they ran last time. Reeves was really deep in his bag of two-point plays for this one. Had the Giants taken the extra point on all three of their touchdowns, they'd have 31 points. Instead, they had 28. And sure enough, after a 32-yard field goal by Todd Peterson and a heartbreaking 48-yard field goal for the Giants that missed badly as time expired, the Giants lost the game by two, falling to Seattle 30-28. And after the game, all the talk was about Dan Reeves and his questionable two-point strategy. It seems incredibly ironic that the man who was so adamantly against the two-point conversion and wanted nothing whatsoever to do with the rule, one year later, was being incredibly aggressive and was costing his team a critical game with his bold, unsuccessful strategy. He attempted more two-point conversions in this game than he did in all of 1994 combined, which is why after the game, Reeves took a bizarre approach to the post-game press conference of bashing the two-point conversion, and he wanted it outlawed. He said, I didn't want it from the start. I had to deal with it since it's been in existence. I don't like the two-point conversion because you don't second-guess. Sure enough, the Giants were not able to recover from this heartbreaking loss. Unlike the 1994 season where they rebounded and went from a 3-17 to a 9-17 that barely missed the postseason, the second half of the 1995 season would be a poor one. They lost 17-13 the following week to the Oakland Raiders, and I talked about that game in a previous video of mine over a year ago, so if you want to learn more about that controversial game, then click the card in the upper right corner. New York finished this season with a 5-11 record, and had the second worst record in the NFC, only one game ahead of the Arizona Cardinals, and everything came undone after that game against the Seahawks. It would be one thing if a team just stunk one day at two-point conversions. That's happened before, and the Giants are not the only team to go 0-3 from the two-yard line. And it would be one thing if the team lost the game because of their aggressive strategy, as was the case here. But the fact that it was Dan Reeves of all people makes this story all the more bizarre and fascinating. Here was the most vocal critic against the rule deciding one day to loosen up and live a little on the wild side, and it backfired in absolutely spectacular fashion. As Dan Reeves found out on this November day, while the two-point conversion has its upsides, it also has its very, very prominent downsides. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.